So things are gonna go horribly wrong and I'm here for it. I don't even know what this book is about. I mean, not that I love the idea of finding a dead body on your driveway. NetGalley rejected me, but that's okay. That's okay. They're not slowing me down. And it has a, a mm, calendar, <laughs> sorry. Friends, secrets, lies. Let it all cut loose and maybe let a couple of them not make it out alive. Okay, something bad is happening. It's all you need to know. Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse and welcome to a cozy book haul. And it's only cozy because it's really cold outside and I'm wearing this giant sweater and I feel very cozy. And it seemed like as good a day as any to haul some books. So this is a combination of books that I got for the holidays, like holiday gifts, books from publishers, books I've gifted myself, and books that we're just gonna talk about now. So <laughs> that's what a book haul is. <laughs> the first book I have, I will let you know which books were gifted from publishers. But the first book I have is The Engagement Party. This was not a publisher gift. This is by Darby Kane. This is The Guest List is a Real Killer. This came out at the end of 2023. This has a premise that I absolutely love. I'll, I'll, we'll see how deep I go into each one of these books. So in this one, we have Emily Hunt went missing from her affluent liberal arts college on graduation weekend. Her body was found floating in a river. Across campus, a quiet loner died by suicide. A tenuous link, one text, bound these two dead students together and was enough for law enforcement to close the case. But they got it wrong and now someone is determined to set it right. So 12 years later, we have college friends gathering to celebrate an engagement with a long overdue getaway at a swanky private island in Maine with only one way in and one way out. Love it, isolated thriller, reunion, old friends, past and present mysteries, all the things I want. And it says, Sierra Prescott, invited as a guest and unconnected to past events, is the only person who soon senses not all is what it seems. So things are gonna go horribly wrong and I'm here for it. Okay, next up, I picked up A Friend of the Family by Lisa Jewell. So I am on a mission to read every Lisa Jewell book ever. She's a read to zero author for me. And in the process, I am collecting all of her books that I don't have. So it pains me to admit that I've actually read this, this part doesn't pain me to admit, I've actually read this book back in, back in the day when I originally discovered Lisa Jewell. The pain part is that I unhauled it in a clear error of judgment when I was forced to unload books because I didn't have anywhere to put them when I lived someplace else. And now I have repurchased it. So this is one of her earlier books. This is still in her, I would say kind of like rom-com but with weightiness, period. <laughs> How's that for a genre? This is her fourth book that she wrote, and this came out in 2003. So I'm excited to reread this. I am not reading her books in order. I'm still like gravitating to them where I feel like it, but this is one that I was missing and decided to pick it up. Okay, let me stick with books. I will do publisher ones at the end. Okay, the next one I have is by Nalini Singh. This is There Should Have Been Eight. So I talked about this book when it came out last year. It was definitely on my list. Kind of in a similar vein. Friends, reunion. There should have been eight of them, but somebody's missing. So I actually got this book. This does pay me to say. The Penguin Rewards program is no longer. I have talked about it on here multiple times. You used to be able to upload receipts for books that you bought in the Penguin universe. And when you collected X number of points, you got a free credit for a book. So this is one of the credits I cashed in for this book. So sadly that came to an end January 15th. You have till April to cash out your credits. So I still have a couple I'm holding on to, but anyway, that's how this book came into my life. So this is Seven Friends, One Last Weekend, A Mansion Half in Ruins, No Room for Lies. Someone is going to confess because there should have been eight. So this is a group of friends. They are on a remote estate in New Zealand's Southern Alps. Why do I feel like I said Zealand? Really weird, New Zealand. They're on the Southern Alps to hold a reunion that no one will ever forget. So they met when they were teenagers, now they're adults. And it says, time has been kind to some and unkind to others and the cruelest of all to be the one they lost nine years ago. So gives me all the vibes of like Shiver by Allie Reynolds. You guys know that I love this past present mystery. I mean, <laughs> gives me all the vibes of this one. Isolated Island, friends, secrets, lies, let it all cut loose and maybe let a couple of them not make it out alive. Okay, the next book I have is How Can I Help You by Laura Sims. 
And this was also gifted to me um, by someone I know and love, not by a publisher. Why do I, I don't know. Uh, okay, the lives of two librarians become dangerously intertwined in this razor sharp exploration of human nature and the lure of artistic expression. So we have a small town public library and no one knows Margot's real name. They only know her as the middle-aged, congenial and charming woman. And they have no reason to suspect that she is in fact a former nurse with a trail of premature deaths in her wake. Is it weird to say, I don't even know what this book is about. I don't even know what this book is about. She has turned a new page, so to speak, and the library is her sanctuary, a place to quell old urges. So she works in the small town public library. That is at least until Patricia, a recent graduate and failed novelist, joins the library staff. Patricia quickly notices Margot's subtle, sinister edge and watches her carefully. Now, I feel like this next, I feel like this might be a little bit too much. So it says chilling, incisive, and darkly humorous, a propulsive work of psychological suspense that asks how far we might go to justify our most monstrous desires. So I was listening to a Samantha Downing podcast when her book, A Twisted Love Story, came out. And this is one of the books she recommended. She was reading it. I feel like she was reading it as an arc and it hadn't come out yet, but I put it on like a wish list and here it is. So stay tuned for that. Okay, another one that I picked up on my own. I don't remember why <laughs> it just came across my radar. Like I'm looking at it and I'm like, what linked me here? This is The New Girl by Harriet Walker. So it says she's borrowed your life, but what if she decides to keep it? What I think might have happened, I think I was on penguins website looking at books and it was one of those like if you liked this you might like that kind of a book this came out in 2020 i don't know i feel like that's what it is so it says glamorous margot jones another margot you guys glamorous margot jones is the fashion editor at a glossy magazine Hoot. pregnant with her first child margot knows that her carefully curated life is the object of other women's envy who wouldn't want her successful career of loving husband beautiful house and stylish wardrobe Maggie, a freelance journalist, certainly knows she doesn't measure up, but when she gets the temp job covering Margot's maternity leave, Maggie seizes the chance to live a flashier life, even if it's only for a few months. So Margot has just had her baby. She's got some stuff going on. She's got some insecurity and suspicion. She thinks that Maggie is trying to basically steal her life. <laughs> like who wouldn't want to? And it says, are Maggie's newfound ambitions and plucky enthusiasm as innocent as they seem? And what happens when Margot is ready to return to her old life, especially if Maggie doesn't want to leave. So I think this is, I mean, definitely we've got like some toxic female friendship going on here. This is like embarrassing. I'm like, why did I, what was it about? Mm, I mean, I'm super intrigued by this. I just don't remember how it popped onto my radar. It's, it's a book lover's problem. It's a book lover's problem. Okay. I do know how this next one popped onto my radar. This was recommended by Becca from Bad on Paper, which she is the author, Becca Freeman, of the Christmas Orphans Club, which I read last year. That's her debut. But she's a big rom-com reader, and she recommended this. This is Business or Pleasure by Rachel Lynn Solomon. I'm fairly certain this came from Becca. Uh, could have come from Ashley Winstead. Um, Carly For Fortune blurbed it on the back. It could have come from her. Okay. A ghostwriter and a struggling actor help each other on the page and in the bedroom in this steamy romantic comedy. Chandler Cohen has never felt more like the ghost in Ghost Rider than when she attends a signing for a book she wrote and the author doesn't even recognize her. Oof. Oof. The evening turns more promising when she meets a charming man at the bar and immediately connects with him. But when all of their sexual tension culminates in a spectacularly awkward hookup, she decides this is one night better off forgotten. Easier said than done when her ex, her ex project, her next project is ghostwriting a memoir for Finn Walsh, a C-list actor best known for playing a lovable nerd on a cult classic werewolf show who now makes a living appearing at fan conventions across the country. Chandler knows him better from their one night stand of hilarious mishaps. So they're going to have to work together. They're going to have to try and stay apart from each other perhaps, but I imagine that they're going to get it together. So business or pleasure very excited it just sounds fun i have written a small rom-com a little bit steamy wave last year if you guys saw some of my books so i don't know it just sounded really good <laughs> okay the next book i have i talked about this one in a vlog that i did last year which seems still so funny to say because it's just january i will say though unrelated to anything reading 
I started doing a five-year journal last year where you do a line a day and it's like pre-made for you. So you just have to put in, like the date is there, like it'll say January 11th, 20, and you put in 24, January, 2024. And then each year you can see what you did the year before. Anyway, I'm very much enjoying it, but I have written 2023 for all of this year so far. And I caught myself last night and I had to go back and change it. So anyway, in 2023, I did a video where I talked about The Prey by Ursa Sergadotter, and here it is, because I ordered it from Blackwell's in the UK. So it took a minute to get here, which is totally fine. So in this one, we have three different stories. So it says, the first phone call shocks a family. The second tracks two missing couples. A third from beyond the grave, question mark? How are these events connected, and what may be searching for its prey out on the ice? So she definitely writes some ghosty stuff. I have not read any of her books despite buying a few of them. This was a recommendation from Abby at Crime by the Book. These are Nordic Noir, again, multiple families, multiple people. There's gonna be some kind of a connection. We have a couple from Reykjavik. We have a man living in a small fishing town on the south coast of Ice Iceland. And then we have someone who works at the, I cannot pronounce this, in the Highlands. He's alone when the phone rings. Um, I know she does ghosty stuff. I'm doing a terrible job describing this book because there's so much information here, but definitely we've got um, some real bad stuff happening. It is snowy, it is cold. I feel like it's ghosty. A lost child, two missing couples. What was waiting for them on the ice? Maybe I should have just read the blurb on the front. A lost child, two missing couples. Something bad is happening. Something bad is happening. It's all you need to know. Okay, The Cliff House by Chris Brookmeyer. I feel like something bad is also going to be happening in this one, which I'm here for it. Seven women, seven sins, one night of judgment. Jen Dunn is a 42, is a 42. Jen Dunn is 42 and getting married for the second time, but that doesn't mean she can't go all out for her bachelorette weekend. She's booked three days of super exclusive luxury accommodations on a remote Scottish island. Yes, for herself and six other women. There's Jen's tennis coach and fellow tennis playing fashionista. The famous pop star and that pop star's estranged ex-bandmate, plus Jen's future sister-in-law and the sister of her first husband. Awkward. Helicopter won't be back for 72 hours. They have the island all to themselves. You know some stuff is going down. Somebody goes missing. We get threatening messages. We've got secrets. We've got lies. And yeah, everything I love in a book. Everything I love in a book. Okay, next one is Ask for Andrea. This is by Noelle Illy. I-H-L-I. I'm sorry I'm saying that wrong. This was recommended by Gare from Killing the Tea. So I've had my eye on this one for a bit as well. So we have James Carson has gotten away with murder three times. Yes. The only thing that might stop him from killing again? The three women he murdered. He hunted them online, masquerading as an eligible bachelor. Then he played the perfect gentleman, a thick layer of charm and a thousand watt smile, hiding the fact that his first dates end in shallow graves. Mm. But what James doesn't know is that his three victims have found each other and that they're coming for him. Brescia, Megan, and Skye might be dead, but they're not gone, and they won't rest until they find a way to keep him from killing again. The hunt is on. I, I, I don't know if this is supernatural. I don't know if they are speaking from the grave in like a lovely bones kind of a way. I'm not totally sure. I just know that Gare loves it and he recommended it. So we'll find out. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's happening there. Okay. The next up is A Talent for Murder by Andrew Wilson. A Talent for Murder is the name of the new Peter Swanson book that's coming out in 2024, which NetGalley rejected me, but that's okay. That's okay. They're not slowing me down. <laughs> But when I saw the title of it, I'm like, I know there's another book like that. So anyway, I came across this book whenever ago. I'm in a major Agatha Christie kick. This is a fictionalized version of what happened to Agatha Christie during that time when she went missing, those mysterious days where she has that magical amnesia. So London, 1926, Agatha Christie is boarding a train to visit her literary agent, preoccupied with the recent devastating knowledge that her husband is having an affair. Facts. Suddenly she feels a tap on her back, causing her to lose her balance, and then the sensation of someone pulling her to safety from the rush of an oncoming train. So begins a terrifying sequence of events, for her rescuer is no guardian angel, but a blackmailer of the most insidious, manipulative sort, seeking to exploit the world-famous novelist's expertise in the art of murder, 
but writing about murder is a far cry from committing one. And Christie must use every ounce of her ingenuity and cunning to thwart her adversary's evil plan. So this reinvents what happened when she disappeared. And I love the idea of someone being like, you write the best murders. We're going to like have you help us murder somebody. So I believe this is the first in a series. I'm just super intrigued and it just kind of sounds fun. And yeah, so there you have it. Okay, I finally picked up, and this is a finally, The Whispers by Ashley Audrain. So this came out, I want to say, the middle of last year. I read The Push when it came out. I definitely enjoyed it. Definitely dark stuff and had a good time with it. And I don't know why I didn't immediately like pull on buying this book, but here I am, I got it. So again, have heard fantastic things about this. I definitely enjoy Ashley Audrain's writing. She explores, I would say motherhood again in this book from what I understand, and maybe complex female relationships in this one. I think she just writes real complex women, period, and darkness all over the place. So we are on Harlow Street. The well-to-do neighborhood couples and their children gather for a barbecue as the summer winds down. Everything is fabulous until Whitney, the picture-perfect hostess, explodes in fury because her son disobeys her. Everyone at the party hears her exquisite veneer crack, loud and clear. Before long, that same young boy falls from his bedside window in the middle of the night, and then his mother can only sit by her son's hospital bed where his life hangs in the balance. So my understanding is we get like some village gossip. What actually happened? Was he pushed? Did he fall? People start talking about her. And I don't know too much more about it past that because I intentionally stopped reading because I don't want to know anything else about it. But I've heard fantastic things about this book. So here she is. Okay, if you watched my 12 and 24 video, then you would have gotten a sneak peek of this next book, which is First Lie Wins by Ashley Elston. So this just came out in January as well. I had heard all the buzz about it before it came out. I want to say to the likes of Ashley Winstead was raving about it. I'm like, who else has blurbed this? <laughs> I could tell you who else was raving about it. El Casamano, Wendy Walker, Kara Thomas. Yeah, Ashley Winstead. So I wound up just snatching it up because I needed to know. So this has a con woman vibe to it as well. And I've heard nothing but fantastic things and I'm excited for it. So also want to go into it a little bit blind. I talked about this in my January new releases video also. So it might seem familiar to you. It's also a book of the month pick and it's a Reese pick like props to her. It's already a bestseller. It's been everywhere. Writer dreams, writer goals. So Evie Porter has everything a nice Southern girl could want. A doting boyfriend, a house with a white picket fence and a tight group of friends. The only catch, Edie Porter doesn't exist. The identity comes first, Evie Porter. Once she's given a name and a location by her mysterious boss, Mr. Smith, she learns everything there is to know about the town and the people in it. Then the mark, Ryan Sumner. The last piece of the puzzle is the job. So Evie doesn't know who this Mr. Smith is that she works for. I think she is falling a bit for Ryan, which kind of messes up the whole point that he's the mark. And then a woman strolls into town who seems to be somehow maybe connected to her past or knows something about her or threatens her existence as we know it. <laughs> I don't totally know. I don't totally want to know. So this is her adult debut. She has written six YA novels. And like I said, I've just heard so many fantastic things about this one. I've also heard this is one of those like don't start it at night because you're not going to fall asleep because you're just going to want to keep reading it. So I'm very much trying to balance. I have read a lot of 2024 releases so far, which I'm not mad about, but I'm trying to read like a little something that's not 2024, but then I'm going to probably head first dive into that one. So stay tuned. And then I have two books that are 2024 releases that I already read. <laughs> so the first is The Heiress by Rachel Hawkins. I had an e-arc and an audio arc of this, which I loved, which I will have talked about in my January part one reading, which you probably haven't seen yet. But anyway, more, more to come on this. I'm a huge fan of Rachel Hawkins. I have read four, like her four Rachel Hawkins books. She's written books under other names, but I've read all the Rachel Hawkins books and I have loved them all a lot. And I feel like Reckless Girls was my favorite, but now this might be my new favorite. So we get multiple timelines. We get sort of different storytelling devices. We get epistolary, we get like news reports, magazine reports type of a thing woven in. 
And this is a fantastic rich people behaving badly kind of a story. So we have Ruby McTavish, Callahan Woodward, Miller Kenmore. And when she dies, she's North Carolina's richest and most notorious woman. So she was a victim of a kidnapping as a child, a widow four times over, and basically a gossip hub for this town. So she adopted her son Cam, and when she dies, she leaves everything to him, but he doesn't want to have anything to do with the remaining members of the McTavish family, but they are all pretty not pleased that he got all the money and what did they get? So they still live in the family estate. Cam winds up having to return 10 years later because something happens. He has his wife with him and we start to understand why Cam doesn't want to be there, the dynamics with the family, and we get to understand Ruby's background as well. It's really good. It's really juicy. I, there's like a fourth wall breaking element to this. Like I just loved everything about it. I love the characters in this. I love her storytelling, her language, her writing. Like I just am such a huge fan of Rachel Hawkins and her humor I just think is fantastic as well. So highly recommend this one. And then the next one I have, which was also a 2023 release, which I had an e arc of, and then Abby very graciously sent it to me, is Rabbit Hole by Kate Brody. So I got to finish it by physically reading it, which was fun. This came out, I want to say January 2nd. It was like the, one of the first books that came out this year. And this book is real dark, you guys. Like, darker than I expected. So this is, which maybe it's gonna sound weird when I tell you what it's about. So this is about a girl who 10 years ago, she was 16 years old. 10 years ago, her older sister, I want to call her Abby. <laughs> Angie, Abby sent it to me. Her older sister, Angie, snuck out to go to a party and disappeared. And the case went cold, the police wrote it off as a runaway. And this basically destroyed her family. So when the book opens, it is 10 years later, and her father has just driven his car off a bridge, leaving her and her mother to once again try to pick up the pieces of their family. And Teddy, who was our main character, finds out pretty quickly that her dad has spent the last 10 years trying to find out what happened to her sister, including looking for witnesses, looking for suspects, and going down some deep, dark rabbit holes on the dark web and on Reddit, and a lot of cold case files. So she picks up where her dad left off, she winds up meeting another amateur sleuth who is obsessed with her sister's case. And this is such a brutal, bleak descent into what grief can do, into obsession. A big old look at like the true crime, true crime, true crime network online. There's so much pain to this. There's so much like striving for hope of looking for answers and you see just how Teddy is trying to make sense of things and find something to hold on to and grapple with things and it's it's a really really well done book it is not an easy read at a lot of times it it's very bleak and very dark and just heartbreaking in so many ways but again so well written just fantastic job with these characters it's a debut novel which like absolutely blows my mind and it just it's very very well done i'm like thinking of all these things but i don't want to say anything about them i feel like you really need to let the reveals happen in this book I really recommend it if it sounds like it might be a little bit in your wheelhouse, but there's definitely some difficult material in this and emotions. It's very heavy. It's very weighty. It demands a palate cleanser after it, but I very much enjoyed it. So thank you, Abby, very much. The writing is great. And it's just like, again, bow down kind of a book for someone as their first novel and not that it necessarily is like the first one she wrote but still and like it's a it's a go all in it's a hold nothing back kind of a book and I just have so much admiration for that so very good read and then I have three books that were gifted to me from publishers so the first one is Time Boxing The Power of Doing One Thing at a Time by Mark Zhao Sanders I don't have the words to tell you how badly I need a book like this I am the queen of multitasking, which we all know is the worst thing you can possibly do because you don't get stuff done. And I feel like as I 
getting older. <laughs> Can't do things the way that I used to. I can still keep hitting myself in the face with books when I film videos. So it says the gloriously simple practice of choosing one thing to do, when to do it, and getting it done. So time boxing offers guidance on what you can do, should, and will do at any given moment. A pragmatic and life-changing practice of intentional daily activity. So I really need this. Obviously this is self-help. So it says the problem time boxing solves is that we don't use our time well. I do not use my time well. Time boxing is the practice of selecting what to do before the day's distractions arise, specifying each task in a calendar, including when it will start and finish. Calendar, <laughs> sorry. Focusing on one thing at a time and doing each to an acceptable rather than perfect standard. So it's a combination of the to-do list and the calendar. I am in such desperate need of a reboot on how to get stuff done because I am real good at having ideas. I am not good at executing and completing and I definitely psych myself out with a lot of stuff. So this actually comes out in February. This is from St. Martin's and I'm excited to dig into this one and to hopefully walk away from it in a much better place than I am today. And then I have two thrillers. The first one is The Silence in Her Eyes by Armando Lucas Correa. This was gifted to me by Atria. I mentioned this in my January Most Anticipated and I'm very excited for this one. So this is a rear window with a twist on it. So we're following a young woman with a rare neurological disorder who is convinced that her neighbor is going to be murdered, but can someone with limited sight be the perfect witness? So Leah has motion blindness, and for the last 20 years, she hasn't been able to see movement, experiencing the world as a series of blurry, still images. As she walks around her upper Manhattan neighborhood with a white stick tapping in front, most people assume she's blind. But the truth is that Leah sees a good deal, and with her acute senses of smell and hearing, better, very little, little, very little escapes her notice. So she's just trying to lead a quiet life, and it says, but then that all changes when Alice moves into the apartment next door and Leah can immediately smell the anxiety wafting off of her. Worse, Leah can't help but hear Alice and a late night visitor engage in a violent fight. Wanting to help, she befriends her neighbor and discovers that Alice is in the middle of a messy divorce with an abusive husband. So I don't want to read any more about this because I don't want to give anything away even to myself, but I love the idea of people mistakenly thinking that she is blind, her witnessing something but not to the full capacity but probably being underestimated by people around her so it's like a very cool twist on the rear window vibe which i love and then the last book i have is radiant heat by sarah jane collins this was gifted to me from berkeley i also talked about this in january this has kind of a jane harper vibe to it partially because it's set in australia is why i say it has a jane harper vibe to it but in this one we have a catastrophic wildfire rips through a woman's hometown she thinks she is lucky to have survived until she finds a dead woman in her driveway clutching a piece of paper with her name on it. So this blaze comes out of absolutely nowhere and Allison is lucky to be alive. She wrote out the fire on the damp tiles of her bathroom, her entire body swaddled in a wet woolen blanket. So the wildfire devastated the Victoria countryside that Allison calls home and sets in motion a chain of events that threatens to obliterate the carefully constructed life she is living. So she finds the dead body in her driveway and she is searching for answers across Australia's scorched bushlands and soon learns that the fire isn't the only threat she's facing. So I'm very curious about this one. I love that idea of, I mean, not that I love the idea of finding a dead body on your driveway, but that she emerges from this fire and this devastation and that's like only the beginning for her. So again, I talked about this in January. January new releases and I'm very excited to have it. So thank you, Berkeley. This is a new to me author and I'm very intrigued to see what this book is all about. So on that note, those are all the books I have to date that are new in my world. I did do a mini holiday sale book haul, um, which if you follow me on Instagram, you can watch it over there. I was not gonna rehaul those books. <laughs> So I went a little crazy. It's fine. That's what the holidays are for. But let me know. Did you guys pick up anything else lately? Where to begin with this pile of books? It's definitely, a, um, I was going to say, it's really an array of books. No, there's one rom-com in this. Everything else is like basically thriller adjacent, if not a straight up thriller. So we'll get there when we get there. So 
there you have it. But thanks so much for watching today and hanging out with me and watching the book haul and for being here and for all that you do. And I've probably said this 10 times over, but I hope everybody's having a fantastic start to the new year. By the time you see this, it's probably going to be like even later. And you guys are like, what are you talking about? But at least I like legit know it's 2024. I know it. I can't write it, but I know it. And I will see you back here <laughs> in another video. This is brutal. It's been a day. All right. Thanks so much for being here, guys. I will see you in the next one. Bye, everybody. Mm -hmm.